And there's also things that, you know, that year after year after year are because they feel like they have a history like this watch, they kind of transcend every year and every in every bit of time, so they never feel like dated, you know. And I think that was the thing that we set out to do when we worked on this watch was not to just stick my name on something, but to create um, another extension of what Ernst Benz was doing with my thumbprint, with my DNA on it. A regular Ernst Benz has a rounded bezel, which is very natural for this era of the watches that were inspired by the 40s and 50s, but there's another design, the angled bezel. Our standard watches have round pushers. Round pushers came from the 50s when everything started to become water resistant because of O-rings. The technology already now for more than a decade and a half allows for CNC to be able for us to make square pushers that have the same tolerance. So for Johns we were able to do square. To do square pushers you have to completely rebuild the case. Because we were already retooling the case we made the lug more angular to match the finish of the bezel and the pushers. Our dial is painted flat and as we explain it's this idea of the perfectly imperfect. So we took this idea of patina and growing up during restoration, I mean, patina is something very special that forms in non-water resistant watches in metal dials, specifically in those vintage chronographs that had square pushers because they weren't water resistant, and that the dials would darken from the outside in. And it took a long time in Switzerland to develop to be able to do this technique, as well as even the illumination. This is gray, luminous. So what we did was we took the luminous and infected it, really like contaminated it to be darker so it glows but it's this dark color and the hands. All Ernst Benz watches have particular hands. There's the cathedral hands that we use like old pocket watches on our regular series. The instrument watch has hands like the gauge, the contemporary, the propellers like Mr. Benz's plane. But for John's watch we tooled from scratch a new set of hands, very gothic looking, very rock and roll vintage, but it actually came from a 1940s gauge that he discovered. One gauge, that had one needle, and so he said, make me a set of hands designed by this. And then we took the inspiration of those hands and made sub-dial hands that are unique to that as well. So the only thing that this shares with an Ernst, standard Ernst Benz is the glass on the top and the movement itself. Everything else is tooled specifically exactly for John. Um, I spent a lot of time in my past lives before I started this company working on shoes and understand how the factories work and how the artisans work and the bench made product is but I wanted to do something to Lenny's point that was imperfectly perfect it's a term that I use around here we knew how to make beautifully perfect elegant shoes we knew how to make those but to make shoes that feel like you had them for your whole life um, it was nothing that anybody at the time, this is back in 2000, 2001, was, at, was really ever, had ever approached at that point in time. Um, and it was one of the things, one of a number of things in that world that put us on the map in terms of working with leathers was the way we approached that. We didn't just wash something and dry it out and make it a rock, you know. We really worked on things that were all done artisanally by hand. And so that's for me the next step when I say disruptiveness in the watch industry is how do you, you, you have to, you know, you have to have a respect for where the product comes from. Um, I've been working with Converse since we started, pretty much started the company. I had a very much a respect for the Jack Purcell brand and most importantly the Chuck Taylor brand and where that history was and how it fit into American pop culture and that. And when I look at the watches, the first thing I want to do is respect everything that's gone into building this watch today. But how do I take it and push it to the right or push it to the left and be a little disruptive so that our guy who's looking for something timeless but at the same time unique? To me that, that was, that's been interesting about this project too is, Lenny uses the word bespoke part of it, is it's a service thing because um, I think the thing that when you invest in a car, when you invest in a home, when you invest in whatever it is in your life that you're investing for, for, for long term, um, you want to make sure that you have quality and kind of assurance and that. So the, with Ernst Ben and with the family being right in Birmingham, Michigan and that, being able to not only service but in a way kind of, you know, it's like in electronics you can upgrade your electronics by putting a new chip or whatever it is in it, you know, an audio system. We can't put a new chip in here, but if you want to, Lenny will put a new face on for you. 
we'll be able to change things for you. So after a year and a half or five years or whatever, you want a little bit of an update on it, you can't take it to Earl Scheib and get a paint job. But you can, you can, we can upgrade it. We can completely change the cosmetics of this. We can't, we won't change the inner workings because that's the movement is what is the machine, the nucleus that drives this watch. But we can really do it. And to have a company that you're working with that's that flexible and that open, that's really built around servicing a customer. Because of the nature of tailoring in general and the nature of being able to take a design and make it personally, and John's instinct. He more than everybody understood our idea of being able to make Ernst Benz unique for the customer. Coming from watchmaking, it's normal for us to adjust the watch to the customer's desires. And it's old Russian saying, the one who pays orders the music. So we always found it very interesting growing up as watchmakers that you could order a car or a motorcycle or, or a suit any way that you wanted, but you come to the top watch companies in the world and it, you basically have to take it the way that they present it. And even small changes are very, are very difficult to get or, or not allowed. For us, we have a platform. Building high-end watches in a lot of ways is like building high-end cars. You have a base platform and you're assembling the platform. Why not allow the customer the opportunity? In a car, you get to choose the color, the calipers, the stitching, all the fabric. In a watch like Ernst Benz, you essentially get to pick the size that you're buying. You're already choosing the movement. It's a chronograph, it's a moon face chronograph. You're picking the dial because we have many dials from design. You might be picking the color of the hands that fit that dial. And the strap, the color of the strap, the stitching on the strap, the sealant on the side. So you could choose or inspend the way that we've already presented it to you, or you can choose to make it uniquely your own. And in John's store, because of the nature of their product, they're able to explain this. And because it's not in all watch store, where you're going against the culture of all the other brands that are presented there, because his culture is about this, it's, um, it's supportive. And so in their store, they have full strap kits. In their store, they have swatches. And when you visit their stores, they'll take the time to sit with you and explain to you your options so that you can take this watch and make it uniquely yours.